You know, brothers and sisters, to come from Alabama to Maryland, you don't think I'm going to just give you what you want to hear, amen? Do you want me to give you what you want to hear? Do you want the truth? The whole truth? Are you sure? Now the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel chapter 3, beginning in verse 17, it says, Son of man, I have made thee, what's the next word? A watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word where? At my mouth and give them warning from me. So the Bible says that the ministers of God, the people of God, according to the Bible, are to be watchmen. Now, you know what a watchman does. His job, brothers and sisters, is not to entertain a people. It's amazing that the devil has done something to our denomination and to the denominations of this world. He has made it appear that when a man comes to church, that the minister's job is to entertain the members of the church. And if that minister cannot entertain, then they don't want another church. They want something else. They think that a concert or an entertainment, something that's going to make them feel good when they leave, is all the church is about. Well, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that the message of God is to be a warning message. And let me tell you something. You need to hear a warning message this morning because a crisis is going to take place. And Maryland is going to be at the heart of this crisis. We're going to find out that in Maryland, you're going to wish that you never lived in a city like this. While all of the counsel that you heard about getting out of the city and going to the country, that you just say, well, I don't care about that. Very soon, we're going to show you today, you're going to wish that the counsel had been heeded. This world is surrounded. I'm going to tell you something. Maryland right now is one of the worst places to live in the world. It is not called Maryland for a reason. It is Mary's land. There are more consecration of Catholics in Maryland, my brothers and sisters, than in the cities of this world. This, my brothers and sisters, is going to be one of the first and foremost cities of America that's going to leave this crisis out. And we're sitting carelessly. There are more demons in hell in Maryland than any other city. Somebody says, what do you mean? Listen, I want you to see something. Watch this now. This says, world headquarters of the what? Well, I wonder where that is. That's right here. Well, you can go down the street and see this. Am I right or wrong? Now, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make not fun. He went to make what? War with the remnant question where do you think he would attack the remnant that dragon represents the devil where do you think he's going to attack look if i had a gun and a man has a gun and is trying to kill a man does he shoot his fingers does he shoot his toes he goes for a vital organ where is the vital organ why a brain is a vital organ that's a head a heart is a vital organ. That's the heart. What, what is the headquarters of the remnant church? Where's the heart of the remnant church? Look now. This is where he's tacked. It's a heart attack. This is what the prophet says. It says Satan's, what's the next word? Chief work is at the headquarters of our faith. The devil is more interested in what happens in Silver Springs, Maryland, than in any other place of the entire world. Why? He spares no pains to corrupt many responsible positions. The headquarters of our faith affect the whole body of believers. You see, whatever happens in Silver Springs happens in China. Whatever happens in Silver Springs happens in India. Whatever happens in Silver Springs happens in Africa. You can go anywhere in the world. If you can just get control of the head, you can control the body. And the devil's intelligent. Why, he's the insane, but he's intelligent. He knows that all he has to do is affect Silver Springs, Maryland, and he can control the entire world. And my brothers and sisters, the devil is using everything to destroy this church right now. But praise God, the gates of hell are not going to prevail. I'm telling you, but the reason why it's not going to prevail is not because we're going to jump in bed with Rome and start closing our mouths and not talking about these things. It's because somebody is going to cry aloud and spare not. 
Somebody is going to sigh and cry of the abominations that be done in Israel. Somebody is going to give the trumpet a certain sound. Somebody is going to say, I don't care what man says or the world says or even the church says. What does God say? I'm telling you a shaking is getting ready to take place. This world is surrounded and the only church that has an understanding of what is to take place is called Seventh Day Adventist and the devil has put us to sleep. I said he's put us to sleep. Somebody must sound an alarm, brothers and sisters. Somebody says, well, you get in trouble. You're right there. They can take you and, and, and disfellowship you. Well, they disfellowship Jesus. Why, if they disfellowship me this morning, I would still say this is God's church tonight. Jesus said when they put him on the cross, he said, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. No one was disfellowshipped at Jesus and Jesus' attitude toward his church never changed. The church that crucified him, he said to his disciples, go to that church and prepare them. Why? That was the chosen generation. And let me tell you something, this remnant church is going to finish the work, but it's not going to finish it like this. There must be a revival and a reformation. And it's not going to happen by the majority of those that want to hear smooth sermons and preach smooth sermons. It's going to happen by watchmen that wake up. They're not going to try to entertain and tell jokes. Why, it's a serious thing to stand before this desk. I couldn't go to sleep last night. I was praying to the wee hours of the morning, Lord, have mercy upon my soul. Stand between the living and the dead. Jesus is getting ready to come, brothers and sisters. We're not hearing this. We're hearing about drives and doing all this other foolishness in the world and don't know that the majority of Seventh-day Adventists are going to be lost. Do you know that we're told that over 99% is going to be shaken out of the Seventh-day Adventist church because we don't take it serious. We're more interested in ceremonies. We're more interested in formalism. We're more interested in everything else but what is going to change our hearts. And let me tell you something, there's not one person in this room that's ready for what's getting ready to take place. Not one person in this room. The Bible says in Ezekiel 3, in verse 18, the Bible says, give him warning from me. Verse 18 says, when thou say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely what? Die. And thou givest him not warning nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way. What's the purpose of the warning, the Bible says? To save his what? So the warning message is not for condemnation. The warning message is about salvation. The purpose of the warning is to save the life. Is that clear? And so when this warning is given this morning, it's not to condemn us. God would not send a message to his church to condemn us. I don't care what sin is in our lives. God sent his son into the world not to condemn men, but that through him they might be saved. The Bible says, but if you give this warning message in verse 19, Verse 18 says, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I what? Require thy hand. In other words, the Bible is saying, listen, the Bible says that the, every member, every messenger, every minister is to be a, a, a watchman that is to give the warning. But, 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 but if he gives the warning message, if he does not give the warning message from this pulpit, from the presses, from his life, then the Bible says, if the sinner is lost, he's not going to be lost by himself. That if the messenger is afraid to teach the warning to you, that if the minister says, well, they're not going to like me, you know that the minister's job is not to be liked. You got that from Twitter. You got that from Facebook. Like me. The devil has brainwashed us. We want everybody to like us. Oh, did you see my page? Like me. I don't like you. <laughs> I want to love you, brothers and sisters. You see, like will lead a man to fornicate. Like will lead a man to take a, a drugs. Like will lead a man to hell. But love will save his soul. Love will save his soul. And so my brothers and sisters, the Bible says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. If the minister does not give this message, if the sinner has lost, his blood is on the hand of the minister. And let me tell you something, I have too much sin in my life than to have yours added to mine. I'm going to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And as long as I have minutes left, I'm going to use every second, amen? 
Now, my brothers and sisters, someone says, well, do you think that everybody's going to listen? I would not be foolish enough to believe that. That's not what the Bible says. Next verse, look what it says. Bible says in verse 19, yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness, everybody's not going to listen. Do you know that I don't care how many ministers preach the message unadulterated by the power of the living Christ. If they didn't listen to Jesus, what makes you think they're going to listen to us? If we preach it unadulterated and the love of Christ, do you know there's going to still be somebody that says, well, I'm going to dress the way I want. I'm going to eat how I want. I'm going to worship the way I want. I'm going to do what I want. I don't care what the minister says. The Bible says some are going to do that. But do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says, yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But, I like that but, what do you say? But thou hast what? Delivered thy soul. Listen, everybody is not going to listen. But if we do the job faithful in the love of Jesus, somebody's going to wake up. Somebody's going to run to Jesus. Somebody's going to see a need of change. Somebody's going to see a need of revival reformation. Somebody is going to give the trumpet a certain sound and God is going to prepare people that's going to stand. Now, there's going to be very few. Very few. But I want to be a part of that remnant. What do you say? Amen. 